Hello everybody, today I'm going to be showing you a little tutorial on how to make fun little floating islands in Minecraft. Uh, you will need world edit, which means you will also need a server. Uh, you can get a server from Minecraft.net, you can download it and then host it on your computer. Or I guess you could, uh, you know, buy a server from a hosting company. I use uh, MC Pro Hosting, but you can use whatever you want. Uh, but I'm not going to be showing you how to make this stuff. This is my own handiwork. Uh, this is a lot of fun stuff here. This is something you can do with world edit. This kind of crazy, wacko kind of terrain building going on here. Uh, you can do that. Uh, but I'm going to show you something a little bit more akin to this guy. Maybe not as tilted as this guy, but something a little bit like that. Um, but of course, what you need to do first is you need to see a good location. Uh, so here is the spawn of my, my upcoming Minecraft server. I'm not trying to plug that or anything. I'm just, you know, saying it. Um, we're going to be building something more akin to these guys. These are pretty basic islands. As you can see, there's uh, a lot more simple stuff going on. Now, these big ones here, like this one and this one, these are uh, just end islands that I copied and pasted and then did a lot of work to them to make them, you know, into real floating islands. So we're not going to be doing anything like that. That's a bit of a different process. We're going to be focusing on something like this, or like that. So the main thing that we're going to be doing here is making cylinders and then putting trees on top of them and then flipping that over after turning it all, whatever. We will see more details. Different types of trees can produce different results. That's what we're going for. For example, these were made of jungle trees. You could probably tell by the uh, the two by two towers there. And uh, stuff like, uh, well, that one was made with tall birch trees, uh, which that one was a bit of an experiment of mine to see how it turned out. Not a fan of that one, honestly. Uh, stuff like these ones were made with large oak. I think large oak is probably your safest bet for making any kind of floating island. But I do know that like uh, dark forest ones turn out alright. This one, this one I built by hand. Uh, it's a little bit different than the rest of them. But we're not going to be doing that. So the first thing you want to do is pick a good location. Uh, for me, that's right here. I think um, this is a nice spot, I think. We're going to go right here. First thing you want to do is do slash up one. This is a very useful tool. Anybody who uses world edit uh, can tell you that it's a useful tool. Uh, it can help you make a lot of really nice shapes. It's really it's really useful to be able to put uh, a glass block in midair. You know, just whatever you want. Second thing you're going to do is slash slash one. For most commands in world edit, you're going to be using two slashes. Just assume that. And I might I might put a list of commands in the description, uh, things you need to know, and stuff like that. So you have your little block here, and you have your little axe. Next thing you're going to want to do is start painting the shape of your island. So you want to do slash brush, cylinder, and then I like to do it dirt. And then you pick a number, any number. The, this is determining the radius. Uh, actually, maybe it's the diameter. Might be the diameter of that circle. Uh, let me check. Okay, yeah. Oh, it might be radius. Is It is determining the radius, yes. Um, so here we go. We have a little, little island here. Now we can take this and we can shape it in whatever way we want to. Let's go something a little bit basic here. Uh, if you want to have a little bit of fun, you can do a little bit more detailed work and make smaller spheres, maybe something like this. Not quite that. And you can do a little bit of this. There is some lag, so I apologize for that. You can do a little bit of that. Uh, and do that. There we go. So now we have the basic shape of our island down. It's a little interesting looking. Um, looks more like a cat's paw, like a, like a, whatever. Um, so what you're going to do next is look at your beautiful mess, and then do slash brush, uh, forest, and then you're going to pick whatever kind of tree you want to do. I like to do it with cylinders, uh, and then I like to do a radius of whatever. The maximum configuration is 5 in default world edit, but if you go in the config file, you can change that to 20. Uh, or as high as you want to. I wouldn't go any higher than 20 or 30. Um, and we're going to do it with large oak. I don't want to do anything too uh, crazy here. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, boop. Actually, you know what? That's a little uh, that's a little not dense enough. So we're going to change that up to 10, actually. I think is what we're going to do here. I'm feeling this more. Oh, yeah, that's, that's dense. So we're just making a nice big old island here. So now what you're going to do is you're going to uh, look at your beautiful island. And this is it. You're done. Good job. Um, no, you're going to find a corner of this. What you need to imagine is a massive cube that encompasses the entire island, right? So find the area right here like this. As you can see, I'm on the outside of this axis and the outside of this axis, and I'm above everything else here. Now I'm going to call this POS1, not piece of shit. It is position one. Um, and then you're going to go to the opposite corner over here, and then you're going to drop below everything and then slash piece of shit too. And now we have the whole island encompassed in this little region. 
So what we do next is we replace all of the leaves, whatever tree type that you have done, with a block. I like to do it with tough. And then you go back and you do the same thing with the log. As you can see here, everything is now made of tough. Pretty cool. Looks kind of weird. Um, but the reason I do this is so I get a general shape. As you can see, some of the leaves start decomposing. So some trees are better than others. Uh, yeah. So what your next step is going to be is going to be turn the fuck around and look up. The reason I say look up is because the clouds can be a good indicator of whether or not you're uh, lagging. I have my FPS on the top left corner, so I don't need to really do that. Uh, but then what you're going to do is replace whatever block you chose with gravel or sand. And then you're going to watch my FPS drop down to zero pretty rapidly. It dropped... <laughs> there it goes! Down to two? Down to one? Oh, are we stopping at one? Oh, there's zero. Okay. <laughs> I was waiting for that one. Now, there is a big limitation with this. You don't want to make an island that is too big, right? Uh, if an island is too big, you will lag out a little too hard and you may end up crashing your server. Your server only has so much RAM to go around. This one's fine, you can see my FPS kind of came back up. That one took a little longer than usual, uh, and it's not even the biggest kind of island I've done. Now you could do this in pieces where you have a big island and you section off uh, trees and you make different positions and you make different regions and then you do it in sections so that you're not doing so much gravel at once. But then you can look at it, you know, okay, you get the general shape and the general feel of it. Uh, if you really want to, you can add some taller spikes, but you can also do that with the trees themselves. Uh, if you wanted to plant trees on top of trees, you could do that. Um, next thing you need to do is replace all that gravel uh, or sand or whatever, any kind of falling block with a uh, stone. And boom, there you go. You've got yourself uh, a floating island. Now, you're probably noticing that we're building this upside down. We'll get to that later. We'll get to that. So, the next thing I like to do before I even decide to flip it is figure out what kind of ores I want. I think for this island, I think what we're going to do here is we're going to do some coal and some iron. Some basic stuff, you know. Actually, you know what? No, we'll do coal and copper because I don't think I have a lot of copper on the server. So, what we want to do here is do slash slash replace again and then stone. Instead, we're going to do something a little different here. We're going to do 1% coal ore, comma, 1% copper ore comma, and then 98% stone. Now, what this is, you might have noticed it already. Uh, let me go up here. These numbers add up to 100%. So whenever you do this, you pick up percentage or number and then the percent sign and then the block ID of that and a comma between each one. And so long as the numbers equal 100, this command will work. Uh, it's very important. You could do 2% copper and 1% stone and 97, sorry, sorry, 2% copper, 1% coal and 97% stone if you wanted to. You could do 98% coal, 1% copper and 1% stone if you wanted to. It all just kind of depends on how you'd like to do it. Uh, and this, I think this is generally a nice little mix. I don't usually like to go above 1 or 2%. And if you ever feel like you've done too much, you can always do slash undo. It's a very nice uh, command. So now you need to pick a spot. Yeah, I know it's very difficult to do that. Uh, pick a little spot, maybe on the underside, toward the middle somewhere. Go up here, and then you do slash slash copy. And then you do slash cut. All your work that you just did is gone. You've been trolled, get real cold. No, I'm kidding, it's an old one. Jesus. Okay, so what you're gonna do next is slash slash rotate. And what we're doing here uh, is rotating it on its Y axis. It goes X, Y, Z. So the first zero is X, the middle one of 180 is Y, and then Z is your other axis. Uh, this is rotating that selection, that region we made earlier with the two points, the piece of shit one, piece of shit two. We're gonna rotate that, we're gonna flip it. So now we're flipping this, and then we uh, pick our final destination, you know. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe we want to be a little closer, maybe I was a little too far out there. And then we just want to paste it, minus A to get rid of the air blocks. You don't want the air blocks, they're uh, just troublesome. And if you don't like the shape, if you don't like the way it's pointing, for example, I don't really want this, you can take it, undo it, and then you can rotate it along one of its axes, uh, like I'll do this. And now it should be flipped around. Let me get down a little bit more, I think we can go a little bit lower here. Hmm. We're gonna go down even lower. I think we need a lower island. There we go. So now these are over here. There's three little spikes are over here. Good thing I made these, now I can actually show off how that works. Okay, so the next trick, we're gonna be taking our brush, we're gonna type two slashes and G mask, and then we're going to pick stone. So there we go, we have stone. What this does is makes it so anything we paint on anything will only affect stone blocks. That's pretty useful, it's pretty important stuff. So when I do slash brush, cylinder, dirt, 11. Normally, if I just did a normal cylinder, it would jut clear out here 
into the air if I placed one right there on that stone block. But because of that mask, it only places it on the stone. This is a very useful tool. It's, uh, as you can imagine, is uh, very, very saving when you're trying to shit. Uh, yeah, when you're trying to take a massive shit. Uh, very useful for that. Now you might notice we have a couple pieces of ore jotting out from the uh, top layer here. Don't worry, we'll get rid of those. Uh, that's just something I tend to do by hand. Or you could wait until after you do this uh, to make a, a, another region and then replace all of that. That's not what I meant to do. That was stupid of me. I, my apologies. And don't be afraid to do this where you have just one block lower in a couple places because it, it may look nice. You may, may be uh, pleasantly surprised as to how that looks. Let's see here. Any more pieces sticking up? I think we're just about good on that part. So the next thing I like to do is uh, make a couple blocks here and there. And then we disable our global mask. Uh, this way we can now place on air again. We can place anything we want to again. And then we want to do a brush, a cylinder of dirt again. I'm going to do two because we have some really small areas here. And we're just going to walk out and make a little bit of uh, elevated terrain. This is really important for a floating island. You don't want your floating island to just be flat on top. It's a little boring when it's just flat on top. Uh, this does add a little bit of depth to it, and depth is really important. Uh, you could put a pond on it, you can put whatever you want on these little islands, you know. It is it is Bob Rossing. You have to Bob Ross this shit, really. Okay, that's what I tend to do. When it comes to when my philosophy with making floating islands, at least the top sides of them, you gotta Bob Ross that shit, okay? You don't want it to just look flat. Uh, for example, let me show you a good example of this. Sorry for the detour, ladies and gentlemen. I, I, the riveting gameplay right there, I know. This one looks relatively flat until you see this little mound here. This little mound gives it character. This island has character because of this. This is really important. Not every island needs to have that one thing. Um, some islands can be a little bit more basic, uh, and that's okay. But I think islands having something like this, you know, every once in a while, uh, is really important and really helps you set the, uh, the tone. Now, if you're just going to be making one island, do something like this. Or even better, you can do something, um, let's see here, put ruins on top of it. Or you can go a little bit crazy, and you can put a little wizard tower on top, because why not? Or you can do like I did here, and have this cliffside come up, and then it's being held up by like stone pillars, right? And then that makes it, uh, you know, just a nice cliffside to look at. It's really fun to be on top of, I think. Like, you can look down at everything. It's quite appealing. Little bridges like this, this stuff is really important for making floating islands. Um, but that's really up to you, you know? It's, it's your little painting. Do with it as you wish. Anyway, we're gonna go back to our little shitty island here and uh, keep on going. I'm gonna fill all this in. Since I'm kind of working in the inner parts now, I'm not really up against the edges. I always recommend you start with the edges of your island first. That way you can come back here and upsize your brush and just start filling in the middle faster. It's kind of important that you do that. But we're gonna do just a basic island. I don't wanna do anything too crazy yet. Maybe we'll put some ruins on this when I'm done with it, uh, but for now, we're just gonna stick with this. We're gonna go one block higher, actually. I'm gonna change my mind a little bit. We're gonna go one block higher. Not throughout all of it, but just some of it. Like I said, uh, adding depth and some height to your island can be really nice. It can add a lot to, uh, a lot to your island. Oh, that's not quite what I wanted, but... You will probably have to go through and do some small adjustments here and there. Um, it's okay to have to break stuff by hand. You know, don't ever be afraid to, like, go back in here and just, like, move some stuff around. You know, like that. See, that's there's nothing wrong with doing this, any of this. Uh, it, it works pretty well, actually. And there we go. So the next step, uh, what you want to do is just slash green. Actually, I think you can do one slash with this one. Yeah, you can. And then you make a radius. And I did 20 in this case. So here we are, we are greening everything. Now when you do the slash green command, you need to make sure that there's nothing above the island. If there's something above the island, like say another island, uh, the green command will not work. The blocks need to be exposed to open air. That's pretty important. So we're gonna make another cube here, piece of shit one. Actually, we're gonna go a little higher than that, my apologies, we're gonna go up a little more. Uh, piece of shit one. I'm gonna keep calling it that, I hope you're enjoying that. So we're gonna go back down over here. And piece of shit too. There we go. So, now we're going to set the biome. Every other biome here is a jungle one, so true to the fashion, I'm going to set biome, jungle. Now you're not going to see anything at first. So if you disconnect and then quickly reconnect, or maybe not quickly, but you just reconnect in general, it will change to the color that you want. 
That's pretty cool. Uh, world edit's pretty dope. Anyway, yada yada. Moving on. Uh, fix that. Okay, so we've got this flat little guy here. Pretty cute. Pretty cute little guy. Um, but we need some trees, man. We need some trees. So the first thing I like to do, generally, I like to place the biggest trees first. And I'm thinking for this one, we're going to have a big old mamba jamba right freaking here. And I have schematics of uh, different trees. And I think my biggest one, actually, you know what? No, we'll do five. I don't think I have enough fives in this world. Uh, is this guy. Pretty big tree. Pretty big cherry blossom. I quite like him. Very pretty tree. Uh, this is nice. I, I think these are nice trees to put. We're going to put one more right fucking here. Let's go back. We'll just do one. I don't know what one is, but we're going to find out. And there she goes. There's there's the number one. Okay. So that is uh, a couple cherry blossoms. Pretty nice. So we're going to take our brush command yet again and do forest again. And we're going to do cylinder again, as you might have guessed already. Uh, we'll do five, actually. And then we'll do some oak trees. So you just kind of take your brush and you just start going. Okay, maybe not that dense. That's not quite what I was looking for. So we got some oak trees going on. Now, I know the biome is a jungle, but I literally did that because I wanted the color. This is supposed to be kind of like a, uh, you know, you're going to go. There we go. A sort of the standard forest that you would see upon starting. And I like the color of the jungle. It's very vibrant. It's very nice. Uh, plus, ocelots spawn, and they're cute. And parrots spawn, too. Um, so as you can see, we now have some nice birch trees and oak trees. For me, I like to go through and add some details to these trees. They're rather boring if you don't. But before we do that, let's do brush paint. We want to do cylinder yet again. Then we go to item, and then we're going to put down some grass. This just scatters grass. That's all it does. You can do this with flowers, which I will be showing you how to do. Uh, it just makes, you know, planting grass patches pretty easy. Uh, it's better than bone meal because bone meal is kind of messy. It's a little bit too dense for me, uh, unless you're trying to be dense. Uh, and I think it's nice. Of course, we can change this to anything we really wanted. If I wanted to do tall grass, I could do so. Boom, tall grass. We'll put we'll put a little bit of tall grass right here because why not? There's some tall grass. And if I wanted to, I can put ferns in there. I could put anything in there, uh, so long as it's like a plant or something. Um, for example, let's do Lily of the Valley. It's my favorite flower in Minecraft, other than, like, the Blue Orchid. Uh, the, the Lily of the Valley is my favorite flower because it's a queen song. It's also, a, you know, a really pretty flower in real life, too. Uh, but I love I love queen. I'm a big fan of queen, so they're nice. Uh, the reason I did cylinders, so we stay on one layer at a time, you can, you know, you can make it a sphere. It'll still work the same way. Uh, but yeah, there you go. This is your own little floating island. Now, there are some tiny details uh, that you can add to it to make it a little bit better, maybe a little bit more fun. Something I like to do every once in a while is just take a bit of water, just find a spot, and there you go, a little waterfall. These really help set the mood. They're really fun, honest to God. I mean that. Like, they're just they're fun. You see a, a waterfall on a floating island, it just feels fun. We're going to put three on this guy. I feel like three is the correct number. You could put four. You could put 40 on your fucking island. A little weird at that point, but you can do it. Um, and now what you've got is an island that even if you dig down, you see the dirt is all the way in there. That's why we did the cylinder and the global mask of stone. You've got like a pretty authentic floating island kind of feel. You can add whatever you want here. Maybe I would put some ruins here. Maybe a little house right here where this tall grass is. You could put a lake right there. You could put a, a shop. Whatever you wanted to do with it. It's uh, it's your canvas. I want to give you some other examples. We're going to look a little bit closely at some of my other work. Uh, this, as, a, as we know, this is large oak. This is the bottom you get from large oak. It's not bad. It's pretty nice, actually. I'd say it's pretty nice. But something you can do with large oak... Um, let me find another good example of this. It's something like over here. So over here on these, uh, what I, like, these fall themed islands, that's what these are. Um, they're really pretty. Um, if you stack tall oak trees, the big ones, uh, on top of each other, you might get a couple really long stems like that. It's really cool. It's really nice. It puts some depth into your island instead of everything being relatively flat. You can have a pretty nice island structure this one i believe this one is made from dark oak if i am remembering correctly this island is made from dark oak it's a very dense one everything's very dense uh, in terms of how the stone looks it's not very long either this one may also be made from dark oak but i'm not entirely sure it looks more like a uh, large oak i'm not entirely sure there may be a couple dark oak ones on top there maybe um but you get the you get the point there's a lot of different islands here and there so you can do something like this guy, a little pond here. And all I did here was just make, uh, 
you know, dig it out with the cylinder, you know, the, the brush and the cylinder, dig it out to as deep as I want, and then make a little area and fill the air with water. And then you, well, actually you replace the air with water, I should say. And then you can go through and uh, place all your little grass and sea pickles that you want to do it. Um, and that's really all you need to know for making yourself a little basic floating island. So we'll go back to our uh, little guy over here. I almost went to the wrong island. Um, but yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, uh, subscribe to me. Normally I do fucking politics and I make music. So this is really weird for me. Uh, but, you know, I haven't made a Minecraft video in like... Fuck, like four years or so, maybe more on this channel? Probably like five years? So a little weird to just come back out of nowhere. Hello, it's me. I'm back. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm done having fun. I need to go finish my laundry. Alright, this video's over.